Alright, welcome to episode 6, where I lock myself in the garage and continue on with my wing build. I did have a piece of this edited uh, where I etch and aladine some parts, then the video got too long so I cut it out. I'm actually going to make a small episode with just that kind of stuff later on, so let me show you what I've got done. All right, getting back to work on this left wing. You can see I've got my ribs are now in place for real. Of course, not bonded. I'm still in the process of getting everything clamped up. Uh, my fixture is complete with my spacer blocks, washout blocks, all that crap I've gone over before. Uh, the, I did some the eighth inch offset lines. They actually are pretty helpful. You can see right there how they allow you to get everything oriented just perfect. Uh, of course, no adhesive is in place, so I'm thinking about some other marks. Uh, that I can use a sight line from the top, but uh, just ignore that crap for now because I'm just winging it. Anyway, I wanted to see all these drag anti-drag tubes in place and see what the best method I could come up with for holding them in place is. And so far the zip ties look like they'll work pretty fine. I want you to see this, the way these fittings, I mean, this is an example of a good one, but I did find one down here that doesn't fit so good. So I'm gonna be calling Kit Fox on Monday and see if they can send me a replacement one. They'll happily trade them out for this bad one. Um, not dead in the water. See, when I, if I get this one to lock, that one's not even on the wing anymore. So uh, this one's no good. I'll um, get one of the ones I have for my right wing, swap them out, and I'll be back in business moving on. So anyway, just uh, one thing I learned today. I had the camera going. I was going to speed it up and witness this project. The camera battery died. Uh, this went a lot faster than I thought it would, so I'm not done. I've still got some more holes to drill, but this is uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, a bunch of holes. Uh, all of them are uh, 6 per fitting. All of them are drilled, deburred, clecoed, all the way down to the end. Now I have to come back and drill into the through the tube into the fitting. Got to grab the manual right now and see how many holes I'm drilling and work out my strategy, but... Um, went way quicker than I thought, so I'm going to be mixing high saw pretty soon. Pretty stoked. Alright, I didn't get much done this past weekend. Had some other, well, some road trips to make. Middle of the week, it's cold out here, but I came out yesterday and I got some holes drilled. Uh, it's pretty good progress. I'm uh, surprised how fast this part of the build process goes. Uh, this seemingly random uh, array of uh, Clecos in here... This one is obviously uh, holding the fitting to the spar. So is this one down below, so two out of the six holes. This one and this one are now drilled to retain the drag anti-drag tube to the fitting. My uh, haphazard black mark, you can see all I was doing was trying to find roughly where the end of that is in there. Like I said, it has five holes, but man, even by the time I got one in, it was pretty rigid, one hole. And so I did one hole, one hole, worked my way out until all three uh, tubes had one hole at each end. Then I came back and drilled a second hole in each one, and it's quite locked. So now I kind of have my strategy worked out as to how I'm going to be bonding all of this. And then before I mention how it's the pretty much bonded all at once, I've realized now that uh, there's some obvious places where I'll be able to take a break. So yes, these are primary, um, but... You can't bond this one in place and that one in place and not worry about the rib because it will have so, enough squeeze out on it that it's not gonna that it's gonna lock that in some weird position. So here's my plan. Now that these are drilled and located, I'm gonna identify everything. I'll pull this out. I will scotch bright these uh, drag anti drag pieces, um, etch and anodyne. I will. I've already at that point drilled up the rest of the holes. Now where I was originally thinking I had to have uh, room for my drill to get in here and rivet all five holes, I don't need to do that. I can pretty much do it on the bench or freehand. And uh, as I, I can mix up the high saw with micro balloons to bond the uh, fitting to the tube. Slide the tube through this spar, which, or excuse me, this rib, which can just sit here and float until the very last. Uh, I will have to bond and rivet that. Of course, you have to make sure to slip it through there, otherwise you're kind of screwed. Uh, bond and rivet, again, tube to fitting, but not the fitting to the wing. Um, fitting to tube will be drilled up. Same thing. Slip through here, 
done on this end. So my bonding strategy is going to be, I can slide this rib out of the way. Once these are in place, I can then uh, bond again micro balloons to give a gap between the aluminum spar and the steel fitting. I will ignore this rib until the very end. This one will get uh, drilled and bonded to the spar with this rib slid out of the way. But then I'll have to locate and clamp and bond this rib before I move on to this one. Then it's going to get bonded and attached. Slip through here. I'll leave that one loose. This rib I will slide out of the way, bond and rivet. Slide the rib back in place. This one will have to be clamped, located, and bonded. Then I can do this one. Slip through here, no problem. This rib, I can slide out of the way, bond, rivet, and I will be done with the drag anti-drag. At that point, I can come back and drill, excuse me, uh, locate, clamp, and bond this rib number nine, number 10, obviously, number eight. This one is one of the ones I'll have to do on the way. This one can come last. This one will have to be done. This one uh, last, and this one obviously last. So there's a big gap. <laughs> And it turns out the only ribs I'm going to have to stress out about while I'm doing all that are this one and this one because there's a fitting on each side. So that's my strategy. Uh, pretty happy with that. Not too stressed now. Uh, moving on. Okay, so I've uh, removed all three of the drag anti-drag tubes. I have them labeled for their orientation, direction, which fitting goes where. Uh, as I said, I drilled uh, now all five holes for each end on the bench, deburred all the holes. Um, can't deburr inside, obviously, but I can get this little guy right here. Um, then I hit the outside with a scotch right pad. Now my plan is to clean this up with acetone, etch an anodyne. And then, I, I don't think it was real clear with my hand waving and speed video before, but uh, my plan now is to bond and rivet one end of each tube, slide it back through the floating rib, and then, um, then it will rivet and bond the second fitting on each end before I attach any of them to any spars. Now you can see I've already got my ribs are kind of out of the way right now, and I'll work my way back in. All right, now I'm getting ready to do the etch and anodyne for these three tubes. I uh, haven't caught any of it on video before, and I thought this is uh, not that big a deal just to do these three. I haven't decided if I'm going to do all three at once. So I just finished riveting uh, this last. This is uh, rib number nine. Uh, at the end of this, this is my last fitting on the drag anti-drag tubes. Just got the last rivet in. I thought I had a couple more to go, and I turned on the camera and I realized I was just done. So uh, now I'm going to clean up the smear out of the high solo with micro balloons and then uh, Clico this back to the wing in both positions. Nothing really matters at this point but just so I can leave everything in a state where it makes sense. All right, uh, break point here. Drag anti-drag tubes are all riveted and bonded to the fittings and put back in place. I did uh, manage to get everything slipped through the I keep calling it floating rib just because it's going to be towards the end when I bond them in place. So uh, then I click code everything back in the spot they were just for a sanity check before the adhesive kicks off and that I couldn't cure anything. But uh, that's what they look like. All right, what you just witnessed was me masking off the area where the fittings would go, just kind of crude approximations, just barely outside the footprint of the steel fittings. Use my two inch Scotch-Brite wheel on the steel fittings to clean up uh, the CAD plating on that bond surface. Use the Scotch-Brite pad, a uh, red one, to brush up 
the spars where the fittings will go and used acetone to clean up. So now I'm ready to mix up some high sol. Um, I'll be using high sol with micro balloons for this joint and then I also have to mix up some more high sol to secure rib number five, rib number seven. Okay, just cleaning up. It's a good amount of work. Uh, everything is riveted, bonded in place. All three drag, anti-drag, and rib number five and rib number seven, which are mostly just tacked in place. Um, I checked their alignment and measured the spacing again uh, best as I could and also check that they are perpendicular to the world. So I probably won't get a chance to work on this much uh, tomorrow, but uh, by the end of the weekend I should be back getting in uh, ribs number 9, 10, 8, 6, 4, and 3. And you'll see all that in the next video. So thanks for watching.